placed against this is the equally stark, uncompromising, almost simplistic presentation of exploitative wealth in stories like Manik's Jake Ghosh Dite Hai about people who, in such a milieu, surrendered their conscience to amass money. That interest, this is a point which must already have struck many of you, because I'm sure Manik is very familiar presence to all or most members of this audience. Atthotta Rodhikar, although I've referred to it in, a, in the context of partition, was, it actually appeared long before. It appeared in Ma Manik's first collection of stories in 1935, long before partition, and indeed before the worst of the long sequence of riot and famine. Yet in 1971, at the height of the Naksharite movement, Mrinal Shen still found it a telling mirror of his own times. The last piece in Kolkata Ikattur, the only episode written by Mrinal himself, hits the reader by the contrast between pavement poverty and an opulent banquet. I'm sorry, these are very bad stills. Um, an opulent banquet like that which Manik had depicted decades ago in Jake Ghush Dite Hai. Where then does Kolkata belong? With those who own nothing or those who own much but for themselves alone, who will not assume the responsibility of wealth towards a community of which they will not own membership? The standard answer would be both, but that only pushes back the problem one step, how to mentally integrate both these opposed worlds, which is like a kind of internalization of the old white town versus black town antithesis, this time not just geographical, but social and economic. A colonial antithesis that far from leaving behind, maybe we have to a great extent in geographical terms, but which we seem to have internalized into the human structure and fabric of our society. It is in cinema, now this is a point, I mean, this deserves a kind of lecture of its own, and I'm not the fit person to, rent, to deliver that lecture, but I would feel that although obviously in terms of sheer quantity, um, the, the art form in which, which has been produced in Kolkata above all, and with a head start since the, the early 19th century, is literature, the verbal arts. But maybe the art form through which Kolkata has best expressed itself might be the cinema. But that's a different story. Let me not go into that. But certainly, after partition, it is in cinema, above all in the work of that self-destructive genius, Ritti Ghotuk, that Kolkata defines its newfound, agonized identity most powerfully. The best explanation that I can think of is that the raw, gut-wrenching post-partition saga resisted the more direct, conceptually processed medium of words. You see, words are an abstraction. Okay? They represent through sound or through marks on the page the actual experienced reality. Okay. Um, they do not present an experience directly. But the cinema could draw on the immediacy of the experience ready to hand. Mm, sorry, let me just, um, how do I, uh, you just, is the escape? Yeah, the escape, escape will, uh, okay, right. So, no, no, just, uh, well, that can stay there, but uh, I, I can open the other one. The, yeah. Uh, yeah, can, yeah, we can minimize it and uh, open another, uh, that is the clips. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Ritik's genius identified these latent ingredients of his art in the Kolkata of his time. He extracted the dramatic potential of the drab, dismal cityscape of the time, raising it to fever pitch. Look at this clip from Shubhan Norekha. This is uh, the, the landlord's goons have. Uh, 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 making a raid, as this often did, on the those, uh, refugee colonies of the time. So mother is being separated from a son. So you must remember that it was after decades um, that through a long struggle begun by Bidhan Chandra Rai um, that uh, the 
the, the people who had settled in these refugee colonies won the, any kind of legal right, not even always the title, but the legal, light, legal right to survive on that land. But at this point of time, all the land was, in fact, they were illegal squatters on land owned by landlords. So from time to time, the landlords would send these armies of goons to just, uh, not so much, I think, with any real hope of clearing the place, but of, uh, you know, uh, teaching them a lesson, of uh, giving them a warning, or of legally recording that this land belonged to the landlords. Okay. It is a melodramatic and sentimental uh, scene, this, uh, the woman and the child sort of shouting to each other, this mother separated from her ch children. I mean, it is a tearjerker, as so much of Rithik's work is. And yet, it is a dispassionate, starkly real image of the time. He's not exaggerating anything. He's not piling anything up. This was something happening regularly, as a matter of fact. So that being so, how can we fault this this contrasting scene from towards the end of the film where uh, Ishar with uh, 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 these two locals from the village they have come to the town spent some money and here they are in a what must have been at that time in a park street restaurant there were no other restaurants like this anyway at that time on Christmas and New Year Anyway, I mean, it, you all know the scene, so I'll, that may be subjective for stopping it here. Now, that earlier scene in this one, they're polar opposites, okay, and yet they are striking the same emotional register of an unreal, yet all too real, uh, sort of, of almost phantasmagoric reality. Two nightmares, but that earlier one is the worst nightmare of the two, although it's so starkly presented. Um, it is like a demented welter, that Park Street scene, okay, uh, that restaurant scene, the nightclub, whatever it is. It's like a demented welter of the carefully ordered and segregated elements of the old white town, black town contrast. The Park Street restaurant that periodically perpetuates the colonial hangover while grotesquely upturning it. And it's that same contrast toned down to a realism less imbued with the fantastic that we see between the episodes of Kolkata Ekattur or indeed within the last episode, but there are also uh, scenes involving the, the poor on the pavement outside that party, which is going on indoors. Another topography is reinvented as well. Shubon Norekha, I'll close with some clips from Shubon Norekha, affords a breathtakingly new version of the pastoral vein I talked about earlier, an evocation of the now conclusively destroyed and discredited idyllic other of Bengali village life. This is this is Shita. Sorry. Yeah, I am the yeah, you're so right. She only সুবর্ণরেখা নদীর ওপরতেই রাস্তাটা সুবর্ণরেখা আমি যাব Uh, this scene, of course, is taking place in that shanty in which they live in a refugee colony. 
okay, Shita has left her, her childhood home on the bank of the Shogunno Rekha long ago. But this contrast and, uh, and this, that negation of that idyli kadar is best illustrated in the use of the song Aj Dhamer Khete Rodro Chaya Luko Churi Khala, which runs like a motif all through Shubhannu Rekha. Shita, when she is a girl, sings it early on in her brother's peaceful home, actually beside the Shubhannu Rekha. But the next time we see her singing it is to a young son, while pouring rain batters her hovel in, in that refugee colony. Person. Let's see. Should have begun a few seconds later. But just, this, this is. She's singing to herself. This is the sort of setting. A little later, remember, she actually then sings this song to her son. Hari Binu, tu ma ko shundur gan kori, nadi? Ha ma, she dhanen ke tel da. Shundi? Ha ma, ma go dhanen ke tel te kemo na hai? Shunna, shunli dikhi kabi. Ajithani dikhi te ro. The, the discredited idyll of the dhaner the, the the bees humming and the sunlight playing on the fields, etc. It is extraordinarily revalidated in this preposterously impossible opposite setting. Okay? But this is not the last time we hear the song. We hear it, you remember, at the very end of the play, of the film, in the child's cracked voice, taken back by his uncle to the Shubhanarika country, that his mother had told him about and said, Agdinishchui Jabi. Well, his mother is dead. His uncle, who had disowned his mother uh, while uh, she was alive, now feels it his duty to look after his nephew, after the mother has killed herself in circumstances that you all know about. I won't uh, go in for the resume of the story. And they have landed at the station. And the boy comes out and for the first time in his life he actually sees the right speed. Ritik has dared to appropriate Bengal's most formidable cultural icon, Ravindranath, drawing out the product of even Tagore's genius into undreamt of contexts, extending it, releasing it into new territory, validating Tagore for a new traumatized Bengal. So the film authenticates two geniuses, 
Rabindranath's, whose work carried this potential to be reinvented, and Rithik's, who could so reinvent it. Now, let me remind you of another use of Tagore and Rithik, and then I will draw my conclusions. In fact, I wasn't. The last two clips I'll show are not from Shubhan Narika, they're from Rithik's last film, Jukti Takko Ar Goppu. Jukti Takko Ar Goppu. Nilkanto Bhakti, and in front of his that disturbed girl, ironical called Bongo Bala. <laughs> Well, I just stop you in the interest of time. Um, so again, a Tagore song transplanted in a setting so radically different as to redefine the terms of the original. You must remember that Rabindranath himself was in fact in this song, the Ma is actually the motherland. And Rabindranath has in this song redefined the terms of his own and more, his more simpler and more full-throated celebration of his motherland by repeating in a new ironic and bitter context the same phrase, the, the same phrase, um, repeated from that much earlier song, Oi Bhuvana Mohini. Okay. But this is not the only time such a reinvention happens in the film. There's a much more extended sequence, I won't play the whole thing of course, I'll play just a little bit of it, involving an art form at the polar opposite of Rominda Shongit. This is the last clip I'll be showing you. This is the true I'm sorry I couldn't find um, uh, the, the, these clips I'm showing you don't have any subtitles. The only ones I could find with subtitles were really of very, very poor quality. They couldn't have been projected properly. Now, this last clip, this is not just an extension of the performative context of the dance, it is a revolution. In less than a minute, Jagannath, the old maestro of the form, swings from forbidding Bongobala to don a mask reserved for male dancers to exhorting her to wear it, as it were, to save the world. Okay. Nothing will happen otherwise. There will be no change. In the cityscape of displacement and pauperization, something has been salvaged from the rural disinheritance, a lost time and a lost space, and miraculously endowed with a hint of something new, a potential then unrealized and perhaps doomed to remain so, but something uniquely affected by this new Kolkata, reinvented in dereliction. The old Kolkata, I have argued, was a city to which no one and nothing belonged. Creative experience involved a move away from the city to other settings and communities for which Kolkata might have been the biggest exchange and mart, but was neither a birthplace nor a home. Now, a gigantic pile of jetsam from Bengal's recent tortured past makes the city its own, for it has no other home. We should say they have no other home, for it is human jetsam, human debris. They do not merely supply the foundation or bring the foundation, they constitute the foundation on which the current human settlement of Kolkata has been raised. So the final non-answer to the question of my title would be for me that 
for us here and now kolkata is or can be anywhere equally anywhere can become kolkata however opposite it might originally have been kolkata is not a locale but a space if that makes sense less anchored in the concrete pun intended the concrete built reality that is the default perception of a city instead infusing itself among those structures that the exhaled breath of lived lives i have deliberately used an unromantic simile for i have no desire of sentimentalizing or romanticizing kolkata it is the last city to be subjected to such treatment um, like and here i speak from uh, my studies in another direction like renaissance florence or elizabethan london which i assure you were extremely insecure and uncomfortable places to live in it is kolkata is too chaotic too volatile too feckless the forces guiding its birth and rebirths or should be say survivals like a cat with nine lives will probably always keep it that way by the same token it is a city that can take off in endless directions i would not say kolkata is everywhere but it is it can surprise us by transporting us to unexpected places of the mind thank you you have taken reference from the movie uh, jukti takko goppo that was uh, released sometimes in 1976 around same time there was a satyatra movie called janoranno mm -hmm. which has depicted the, the rustic side of kolkata in such a way i think probably no other film has done so far Uh, your take on that? Um, I don't know. That there's anything very rustic about what rustic you mean, you know, related to the countryside, to village life. Is there much of that in, or indeed anything of that in John Warren? No, no, no. That is not exactly that. I mean, the way the things. I mean, uh, normally, you know, that romantic parts are shown and every, but it's that uh, living way of living. The uh, that particular the protagonist of the film who is in search of a job and he had to <laughs> do some. Uh, Uh, errand jobs and like that so he has to go on to that bada bazaar and free school street and other areas to cover but that way i mentioned the no i mean it, it uh, well that is of course the very reverse of rustic but i mean it is it presents uh, with shotojit's all the finesse of shotojit's art the the accustomed sort of um, uh, the, the 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 hard battleground that is kolkata it I mean, it's a great film i'm not denying that but what i'm saying is that i don't think it tells us anything radically new about kolkata that we did not know already it is it in a, you know a different language and uh, 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 the, the film language that only shotojit could command but do we come out with any sort of new way of looking at kolkata at the end of it which you didn't know before that i don't so the, i didn't talk about it because it was you know, not so relevant to my purpose about the some kind of transformation in the way we live in kolkata and we look at kolkata since the partition i think there i think as a chronicler of kolkata in, in the immediate post partition times and with relevance to later post partition times also to the present day i think rithik is from that point of view uh, more uh, significant more notable Oh yes, of course, of course. Uh, of course, behind all these fil films by Shobhtojit, there are novels by various novelists, by Shankar, John Arunnur, by uh, Narendra Pitro in Mohanagar. Of course, but you know, these. Yes, so, and Mohanagar, the transformation of the family system—that is very important. Yes. Uh, yes, indeed, indeed. That uh, it happens in Mohanagar. It it happens, of course, in uh, a number of Vrittik films and other films also. Um, so. these are uh, sort of presentations of genius of the genius of protojit uh, but you know over the, the actual paradigm that is opened up is i think nothing uh, you know it is not so strikingly new as rithik opens up in some of his films it strikes hard exactly exactly but it's not again it's not just a matter of striking hard but opening up new angles see it's not just i mean There's so much of the sort of blunt instrument effect in Rithik that you might lose sight of the actual subtler points he's making underneath it. Uh, taking you away from the film world for a moment, uh, you've uh, dealt quite uh, extensively with the.
consequences of the refugee influx of 1947. But uh, what about the refugee influx of 1971? And what uh, effect did that have on the city? Um, well, look, I think the received wisdom, which I think is not entirely untrue, though, um, is that the, great, the that immediate wave was that it was turned back. I mean, the, the it wasn't. I mean, actually, you're probably in a better position uh, than the, I was. And there was a porous border maybe after that, but. The, that that sheer overwhelming impact of the post-1947 move. After 1971, I think it was more a matter of perhaps, I think the jury is out till today as to exactly how much influx there was. And very recently, I think a certain ugly and uh, not entirely documented controversies are being aroused afresh over the last few years, which promised no good for the peace and well-being of Bengal. But uh, at most, you might have, to an indeterminate degree, uh, more absorption into what was already a transformed demography. But the, surely the real dramatic impact came in, in the maybe the first 20, 25 years after partition. Okay. And I remember the city of my childhood. I was born a little after partition. I spent my whole childhood in the city. It was a, it was a nightmare city. It was the kind of thing which, sorry, I think I said something like this, in fact, in this very room, very briefly some time ago, or in another room in the Victoria Memorial, that uh, it was the kind of scene which today we see in, you know, TV, or the TV news, counts of Somalia, Sudan, Eritrea, places like that. Uh, but, uh, I think, and all of a sudden, there can be no comparison between the sheer difference it made to the quality of lives to the people of these two eras. A very simple question to Professor Chaudhary. Thank you for a very enlightened uh, lecture. However, going back to the film context, because you've used a lot of visuals from films, I notice. Uh, there were directors of a particular time with thinking, their political thought process or whatever. How would you or what do you think of today's Bengali films and uh, directional sense in them, please? Uh, look, I think this is the question. This will take us into a completely different territory. I think but still, you know, that is okay, no, it's a question A that I'm not very really qualified to answer. I'm not a, a student of the, of the cinema. Because it's a strange and B, it is. Completely removed from, I think, the subject of today. No, no, no. I think uh, we. Uh, talk of Sanyo. In fact, one of the best uh, reflections of the, uh, b b b the, the Kolkata of our day is in the film of that name, Sanyo Shangbad, uh, by, uh, detected by my colleague Moinak Bishash. I think many of you must have seen it. Those of you have, you should, should. I mean, if one wants to make a line of you know, films of later times that continue the story of Kolkata as a city, yeah. then Stanyo Shangbad would be, I think, one of the rank, a very good example. Thank you, Rajiv, for <laughs> the discussion. Uh, this, is such, this is so thought-provoking. And uh, I was just you know, listening to you. I was just wondering if there is any way. You talk about Kolkata as a space, and you pose some kind of a paradox between the fact that Kolkata is the seedbed of all this intellectual efflorescence, something that we loosely call Bengal Renaissance and, and all that. But still there is no sense of, you know, se there is no sense of being anchored to this city mm -hmm. where all of this mm -hmm. is happening. Now, if, is it possible, and I'm just, I, I'm just wondering aloud, is it possible to look at this way and connect it with what is happening uh, in, in history, so that with the beginning of social reform and English education, when the main emphasis is not on nationalism as such, but with on, on social reform and education and, and social changes that they're generating, mm -hmm. uh, there is an engagement with Kolkata in a negative, in a satirical sense, and that is in Kolikata Kamulala, that is in Hutom, Pachar Naksha, and, and all that. 
But then in the post-1858, when gradually, as you have more and more graduates churning, uh, you know, being churned out by the university, and there are no jobs for them, jobs are drying up, and they're unemployable, and gradually there is a transition from social reform to anti-colonial nationalism. And uh, so the, 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 the economic seeds of that turn towards anti-colonial nationalism are very visible in the city, in the decline of the economy, in the sense that in the sense that Kolka the, Bing the, the Kolkata for the Bengalis are being now overshadowed by non-Bengalis, and then obviously the turn towards communalism and, and the sense of the decline of the Hindus and so on and so forth. So it's almost the, the remembered village uh, is both a metaphor for the, the you know, it's, it, it's completely imagined, but it's, it's an imagined uncolonized space which is far removed from the actual degradations of, of the colonized urban space on the one hand. And on the other hand also there is actual physical traffic between Desh and Ghor in Gram mm -hmm. and, and the, the Basha city. in, in Kolkata. So there is no. So and if we take the long 19th century in the sense that since the Kolkata is where the subjugation and the subordination and the degradations are. So there is no sense of anchorage. And the village is always, always a metaphor to fall back on, as well as something to which you can physically travel, you can fall back on. And so if we can extend the long 19th century up to 1947, and then with the demographic churning, you both have a refugee population who have a sense of Chere Asha Gram, who have a sense of, it, that's a sense of longing, but there is no further scope for physical travel. Mm -hmm. So Kolkata is the only space okay. which they are, you know, which they have. Mm -hmm. So they, they sort of fashion it uh, 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 as part of their own. And also for the, uh, for the local people who were already here, this demographic chart churning also kind of anchors them in a new way to, uh, to you know, to, 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 to uh, it leads them to feel more anchored, like you know, the whole sense of being mm -hmm. Kolkataya comes into being now in sort of contradistinction to this, to, to, the, to the outsiders, to the refugees who are settling mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. So is it the, so uh, are you therefore saying that the sense of belonging to Kolkata in different ways, one way for the refugees, one way for the, yeah, those who are already there, is only possible when we, when we engage, you know, it, it only, th that sense of belonging and anchorage comes only after 1947. Do, 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 yeah, do yeah, you say yeah, that? Yeah, that is, in so, fact, the, the basic point I was trying to make in the yeah. last part of my lecture. And yeah. the, is the fact that this was so late in coming, you know, in the, in the post-partition era, has it, does it have something to do with the overwhelming perception of Kolkata as a degraded urban space, uh, which you really cannot embrace as the as an imagined, as, 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 an, uh, as an Arcadian idyll of what you have left behind in the village. Uh, the village is also being wiped out by plague and malaria as, as, as Bhibhuti Bhushan himself shows. But you still reimagine that village precisely because you want to cultivate that as an escape, as a place for escape from the degraded urban space, which is so, so, you know, which is on, on a quotidian level. So, uh, you know, a, a world of subjugation and subordination, is it possible to? Yeah, yeah I think it's certainly possible. I think you have raised two questions, which I'll try to address very, first of all, in the pre-partition literature and pre-partition social life, certainly, in a, especially in the literature which I've talked about, there is that contrasting pastoral little of the countryside left behind with which the sordid city is a contrast. Yet, Simultaneously, there is also another line which draws attention to the tremendous inequality, injustice, violence, 
uh, and uh, general sort of degradation of life in the villages, not just plague and malaria, but also the even more the uh, exploitation by the zamindar, you know, the, the the oppression that, that the common villagers suffered. So side by side, there seems to be a literature directly addressing rural life, which can present that rural life in you know, mercilessly realistic terms. And there is also a literature of urban life, which presents the countryside as a kind of contrasting idyll in a sort of idealized way. These two curiously survive side by side. And after partition, yes, I mean, on the one hand, well, the point I made in the uh, my uh, uh, my paper, which you have, uh, thank you for you know drawing out and drawing some of the nuances of that, that those who had come from outside, the, the refugees, they had no other place to go to. They had to make this place their home, and that made those who had already been here from the start assert their own claim to the place as the original inhabitants all the more. So the sense of belonging to Kolkata arose in both groups. But it was at the same time, as you very rightly say, I mean the Kolkata, which was uh, it was sort of the worst uh, stage of urban degradation. And this maybe accounts for that kind of um, sort of schizophrenia which there is in the psyche of the Kolkata Bengali to this day. On the one hand, an irrational uh, loyalty to the place, and at the same time, a sense of deep uh, unhappiness and uh, distrust and uh, uh, you know, rejection of the actual physical space that it is. See, um, there's a sort of recoil, and at the same time, there's this tremendous um, sense of a gut loyalty, this division. I think that's how it comes. You have to belong here, and yet, what a place to belong to. Okay, that uh, I think is. Uh, but just, 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 you know, your, 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 you know, your talk provokes some of these ideas. Let's take what Kolkata was like before partition. Yeah. city that is, you know, that is, that is Mohanagar, that, you know, just like the last scene of Mohanagar, where the city actually holds out a hope for both of them. There is, there is enough space and enough scope for both the husband and, and the wife to make a living in the city because it can, it is that, it, it, it is a shelter for all kinds of people. Where does this uh, concept come from? What is I don't know that you can pinpoint it to me, because after all, you know, people, but, Turning to the city for you know, to, to earn a living, yeah. to uh, f find a better life somehow from uh, you know from the 19th century, of the, from the 18th probably, uh, there's a certain kind of e emotional redefinition of the terms of this encounter, maybe overall since partition, but in a general way, you know, I think the. Uh, with, with any Mohanagor, any great city, any metropolitan city, a big city that is said of great as emotional connotations, um, that strain will always be there. Sometimes that will, you know, the prospect of improvement, of progress, of finding a meaningful and rewarding life, sometimes that will dominate. Sometimes the sense of frustration of being completely overwhelmed by this huge, anonymous, cruel city, that might dominate. It's a swing between one or the other, you know, I don't think this is, the, I mean, the pendulum keeps swimming, swinging. It never stops anywhere, I think. So one question. Thank you for the illuminating lecture you have given. Regarding the formation of Kolkata, its uh, civic communities, demographic aspects, and areas, all these things has been covered in that. But my humble submission is that whether in view of all this, whether the heading of the lecture would have been more revealing if it would have been history of Calcutta. Well, uh, that's a hot I can give so many titles. Thank you. Uh, my question is that uh, you know that before 1947-15 August, the British uh, developed the Kolkata cities, and after that, 1947, the Indian government and West Bengal government both had developed the Kolkata cities. And uh, according to your opinion, you what do you think that who developed more for uh, Kolkata? Uh, is it British or is it by the political leaders? 
Look, I think this is a question which has no clear answer. I mean, the, the British certainly developed one part of the city immeasurably more than the other. And that part and all the new developments since partition, which didn't even exist as part of the city earlier, all that has come after, uh, uh, after um, uh, the partition. But it's a very checkered history. I mean, you cannot give a simple answer to that. It would obviously be uh, absurd to say that you know, you know, things were much better the, during the British, uh, during the British times. Uh, it, it would really be absurd in factual terms. But the, the, the development of Kolkata since that has also been uneven. Sorry? Uh, well, yes, maybe needs have been bet, maybe they have not bet, been met. It's, very, it's really very difficult to sum up. To give a simple answer to any question like this is, I think, impossible. Yes. So just a question, that uh, as far as uh, the classes are concerned, if we, uh, we uh, talk from a very stratificatory point of view, then the question is the sense of belongingness of uh, being, uh, making Kolkata home. If you try to make a, I mean, make a distinction between the capitalist and the merchant class, do you have uh, any... Uh, I mean, sorry, a distinction between the capitalists and the merchant class. Ca the capitalists, sorry, the landowners and the merchant class, right? So, uh, do you have uh, any information or anything can you can illu uh, I mean, illuminate on the fact that the merchant class found the Kolkata to be their home more than, the, say, the landowners who had their roots more in the uh, rural areas? Again, I mean, first of all, I don't think I know enough to answer this question fully. But again, as with so much else, I don't think there is a simple answer. You see, so uh, I'm sticking to it, one promise, uh, which I made at the start, that I sort of thoroughly confused. Yeah, because you don't like uh, but, uh, You see, that, after all, the, the point I was trying to make is that many of the people who lived in those grand houses in North Calcutta were actually drawing their wealth from the countryside. Okay, but did they have their, if they had their roots in the countryside, they were spreading their branches in the city. Okay, it's a, uh, I mean, there was this kind of symbiosis of the two, I think, they, because otherwise, the, from the mid-19th century onwards, once that first generation of uh, Indian entrepreneurs based in Kolkata had sadly declined, Prince Darukanath being the most well-known example, um, there was very little money to be made in uh, Kolkata by the, the, the Bengali elite, okay, out of trade and commerce and nothing out of manufacture. Okay. That was all left to the British and to one or two other communities like the Marwaris, in particular in Kolkata. Okay. Yeah. I want to take a look. Jodhi, I want to see that Kolkata is a big part of Kolkata. So, I want to see that the people who are living in the world are living in the world. So, I want to see that the first thing is मृत्यु कौन मिलना है? शोध तो जो अनेक तबेहर कुत्ते पाल लेन मृत्यु को अनेक टाइप हो रहे हैं। आमने मिलना ले क्षेत्रे बा ये ये देख सीना है जो कोलकाता के इंद्रिक ठुमरी घोड़ा ना बा कोलकाता शंगी चौचा ये टा क्या नो मने अर्की औरत आम्र ये प्रस्तुत जवाब में दिल्ली बार आपने ये चीज को बोलने शुरू शुरू में आमी शिकलाम ये बार पर है आमी आप तो क्यों ना जवाब देते बार एक ही चीज जानी ना जानी आमर छोटो दो टो प्रश्नों आते हैं माने प्रश्नों में आमी खूब इंट्रिग्ड प्रथम ये तो दिए जे आपने वो जी बोल लेन मेल फीमेल रेशियो 1911 में ऐसे अब आप डिक्लाइन को थी माने फीमेल डिक्लाइन कुर्ते कुर्ते माने फ्रॉम से 1861 तक के अप तू 1911 एक तो एक तो रफ्ली वही बट इट two males to one female, it was four males to two females chilo. Huh. By 1911 it becomes five males to two females. But what is it? I mean, what is it? I mean, what is it? I mean, what is it? Linear, this is a female de shankha baad chhe. Nuclear family set up kora ho chhe. Nuclear family, jani na kolkata hai kotar ki hoto ho chilo abhi jani na. At all, oi period ki bangali shangha jhe ho chilo. Bharat dosha kona se ho chilo. I mean, ho chilo ki? Tabi, ho jodi, I think ये माने थोड़ा उन स्थिति का था गुलो जदी पड़ी बा ये शेखाने ओने के वही न्यूक्लियर फैमिली का था बोलते हैं बा ये जो दी स्थिति का था का था बोले विशेष तो महिला दस स्थिति का था they are women living in as a rule in very exceptional family I mean राष्ट्र राष्ट्रधरी राष्ट्र के पास दी तो अधिकांशो ये के जाती है तो कोल because the economy of Bengal uh, and of Calcutta, whatever you say, was 
on the upswing through the second half of the 19th century into the very early years of the 20th, there was more scope for employment. So more men came to the city, but because fewer of them brought the, I mean, they did not proportionately bring their families along. So you would have had more men coming along, chasing more jobs. But the women were not coming along, the women were staying behind in their dish, the villages. একটা জিনিস আপনার মতামত একটু শুনতে চাই সেটা হচ্ছে এই যে ধরুন টোয়েন্টিজ থার্টিজ থেকে কল্লোল কালী কলম গোষ্ঠী তারপরে যে ফর্টিজে আইপিটি এর যে মুভমেন্ট এর যে এটা মানে মনে হয় আমার কীরকম মনে হয় যে ঋত্বিকের যে ট্র্যাজেক্টেরিটা সেইটা ওই এ থেকেই উঠলো মানে সেই স্বাধীনতা সেখানে একটা কিন্তু একটা ডিভাইডিং লাইন হিসেবে ঠিক আসেনি স্বাধীনতার পরে বরঞ্চ যেহেতু আরো অভাব বাড়লো আরো ক্ষোভ বাড়লো সে মানে তাদের হয়তো মানে কাজের একটা যেটা কনটেক্সটা সেটা আরো Uh, it became a stronger context, a more, a more intense context. But that was one big famine. That was one big impetus. Among that part, the Shadinatar Poreo, IPT was very active uh, after the independence also. Among that part, IPT, leaving the IPT maybe formally, but carrying on what they had picked up from there, uh, you get uh, artists of various kinds of ক্যালকাটা <laughs> Uh, sounds as imposing as Subramanian Venkat Raman. I have often faced this question since childhood, where are you from? <laughs> and I say, from Calcutta. And people still say, yeah, but actually where are you from originally? And I say, I'm an incorrigible, immovable Calcuttan, you know. <laughs> this I say, that, that happens in situations when somebody has talked to me on the phone for 10 minutes in Bangla, and then ask me, what is your name? And I say, Raman. Then somebody asks me on the other side, Raman. I say, no, there is no H. R-A-M-A-N, Raman. Then they say, you're from the South. I say, give a dramatic pause and say, yes, I'm from South Calcutta. <laughs> so I always say that. So thank you very much, Professor Shukanta Chaudhary, for this wonderful evening. Uh, and I think if uh, there were a performance here with Kolkata, holding center stage and all the other metropolises which are so discussed and lauded all over the world among the audience, Kolkata would possibly say, Amake Amar Moto Thakre Dao. Yeah, that would possibly be Kolkata's answer to the rest of the other metropolises. Uh, please join me in giving Professor Chaudhary a big hand for this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. It has been fascinating. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. Please have a safe passage home. Please do avoid all the fresh potholes that have been created by those last three days of rain. But in avoiding the potholes also, do not forget to have the thrill of discovering so many Calcuttas within this Kolkata. Thank you very much and good night.